Good evening once again and a very warm welcome to Rwanda Television News. My name is Gloria Mutesi and today I have the honor to introduce to you for the first time my colleague Jane Mutoni. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much, Gloria. How are you feeling? Excited. Well, it's great to have you. Thank you. Well, take it on. Yes, well, the Rwanda Senate has announced that it is going to carry out an assessment on the recent request by the European Parliament that policy Sabajina be released, as well as claims made by some criticize Rwanda's human rights record. The General Assembly of the Senate convened to discuss a report issued by the Chamber's Standing Committee on Social Affairs, Human Rights and Petitions pertaining to the activities of the National Commission for Human Rights during the 2019-2020 fiscal year. The report highlighted issues that need to be addressed, but also stressed on individuals who use claims they say are related to human rights to try and infringe on Rwanda's sovereignty, while others promote genocidal ideologies while denying and negating the 1994 genocide against Tutsis. The Senate announced that such matters, including the recent request by the European Parliament that Paul Rousset Sabadjina be released, are going to be examined and a resolution reached. The Senate members agreed that Paul Rousset Sabadjina's rights should be respected, just like the rights of those affected by the terror attacks must also not be ignored. They also observed that most of those who criticize Rwanda's human rights record do so in attempts to divert attention from their own actions seeing that they are the ones behind activities meant to infringe on the country's sovereignty and negatively affect her people's security. It was also noted that such individuals are looking to distort the country's image as it prepares to host the next Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The Senate members said the assessment of the request from the European Parliament will not take long and an official reply is soon forthcoming. Other matters the Senate cited as requiring addressing when it comes to respecting human rights in Rwanda include the relocation of people to make way for developmental projects, a process the members noted as needing to be perfected, the fact that not all prosthetics can be paid for in all hospitals, the price of land depending on the activities carried out on it that have not yet been revised properly and more. Thank you, Serge, for that report. Well, staying on this issue, the Chamber of Deputies in Parliament has held a virtue session to discuss the European Parliament's resolution 2021-2543 stroke of the 11th of February 2021 concerning Rwanda. Now, the parliamentarians have denounced the resolution, citing it as full of lies and overlooking facts, while openly infringing on the sovereignty of an independent country, while denying and negating the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. They have, held, they have, also, held, they have also called for joint efforts by commissions in both chambers of parliament to examine the resolution in question so that the findings can be presented to the parliament's general assembly, featuring members from both the senate and chamber of deputies. Now moving on, the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda has announced that the average increase in price of some foodstuff and non-alcoholic beverages in January was 3.5%. Yet the Rwanda Consumers' Rights Protection Organization says that in some parts of the country, supply far exceeds demand for the products. Ungari Jed has more. Across the country, people have seen the consistent rise of various products, so much so that they believe the increases have been affecting other sectors as well. Before, potatoes cost 180 Rwanda francs. They now cost 250 Rwanda francs. Cooking oil would cost 1,400 Rwanda francs and now costs 2,000. Rice cost 20,000 Rwanda francs and now costs 23,000. As you can see, all the prices have risen. A sack of charcoal costs 8,000 Rwanda francs and has since risen by only 500 Rwanda francs to 8,500 Rwanda francs. A bucket would cost you 200 Rwanda francs but costs 300 Rwanda francs now. A bottle weighing 6 kilograms would cost you 6,000 Rwanda francs, but as we speak, it currently costs you 6,500 Rwanda francs. Customers say it has risen significantly, but they have no other options since these are the costs everywhere. 
People living in both rural and urban areas have come to accept the fluctuation in prices over time. A report by the National Institution of Statistics released on 10th of January 2021 indicates a 2.8% consumer price increase in urban areas and 4% consumer price increase in rural areas in comparison to January 2020. <laughs> In the city, it would increase by 2.8%, but it doesn't mean it's the case in the villages. For example, if an item is 100 ronda francs in the city and in the villages it's 50 ronda francs. If the price of an item increases by 20 ronda francs, so it becomes 120 francs and 70 francs in the village, when you compare, you will find that the price in the village would have increased by 40% and by 20% in the city. This is mostly caused because prices in the villages are normally low and a slight increase would make it seem like it's a big difference, but it doesn't necessarily mean that prices in the villages are higher than in the city. The executive secretary of the Rwanda Consumer Rights Protection Organization, Damien Dizeye, says that in the city of Kigali, milk has been scarce and yet farmers in rural areas are having trouble selling their milk. <laughs> We consume a greater quantity of milk in town in comparison to the rural areas where milk is delivered from. Since milk cannot be transported to towns, the prices have increased significantly. However, in the rural areas, the price of milk has decreased. They do not have customers to buy the milk and it is abundant. Since milk cannot be transported to town, it is left at the farms to spoil. <laughs> The report released by the National Institute of Statistics shows that in January 2021, prices in Rwanda increased by 3.5% compared to January 2020, while in December 2020, prices had risen by 3.9%. According to the report, the reasons for the 3.5% increase in January this year is the rise in food and beverage prices by 3.4%, house prices, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels by 4.5%, and hotel and restaurant prices by 4.7%. These increases happened between January 2020 and January 2021. In the report on the consumer price index between December 2020 and January 2021, prices fell by 0.8%. The decline was mainly due to a 2.4% reduction in food and non-alcoholic beverages. Umgari Jade, RTV News. Thank you, Jade. Uh, farmers have been commending the government for helping them acquire machines to dry their cereals during this rainy season and not to have wait for the dry season to do it. The 10 machines were provided to help fight the development of aflatoxins in food stocks during storage, especially in humid conditions. The farmers say, however, that more machines are needed when you consider the number of the cooperatives that need them. For now, the mobile dryers are, as they are known, to give priority to the biggest cooperatives that produce the largest harvest of cereals. In addition to such dry, drying practices, researchers have also found ways to make crops more resistant to aflatoxins right from the fields. Figures from the Rwanda Agriculture Board indicate that more than 600 modern drying facilities for cereals have been built across the country by the government. The 10 mobile dryers cost 470 million rounded francs, and another six will soon be delivered to RAB. And now away from Kigali, seed multipliers in the Ranjingo marshland in Nyangatare district say they are facing huge losses and claim that this is due to hippos found in the wetlands and that these losses incurred have not been fairly compensated. Gabi Muvuni has more. Seed multipliers in Ranjingo Swamp in Nyagatari district working on a 180 hectare piece of land claim in the last three years they have not been fairly compensated for the damages caused by the hippos in the swamp. When they come to measure the maize, they have a standard price, which is one kilo at around 150 francs to 200. We spend a lot of money on these seeds we buy. We buy one kilo of male seeds at 5,000 francs and female seeds at 4,000. Statistics indicate that farmers harvest four tons, which means when one hectare is harvested, the produce is worth four million rounded francs. However, when compensated, they received 150,000 francs. Director General of the Special Guarantee Fund says that the seed multipliers have to bring forward a report indicating the level of damages caused by the hippos. 
so that the special guarantee fund can compensate them accordingly. If the farmers claim that their special crops were damaged, they should bring forward to the district office a report indicating the special types of crops that were damaged and the value of each crop. Then forth, we will be able to compensate them accordingly. The farmers say that finding a long-term solution will not only benefit them, but will also improve the security of the residents that live in the area. Compensating us is not the only solution. They should remove these hippos from here and take them to the park. Zawana Kuza Joseph says that the solution to the problem is being worked on because constantly compensating the farmers will not resolve the issue long term. Compensating them all the time will definitely not be the solution. We are advocating for them so institutions like RDB can step in and aid with a solution that will help relocate the hippos and also to share information so that people can keep a distance from the swamps where the hippos are located. Besides the 180 hectares of maize fields affected, about 420 other hectares of plantation is also affected and consumed by hippos. Gabi Muvuni for RTV.